let's start by going over the indication and box warning for GenRQ. Indication, GenRQ is indicated to slow kidney function decline in adults at risk for rapidly progressive autosomal dominant polycystic kidney disease, or ADPKD. Warning, risk of serious liver injury. GenRQ or tolvaptan can cause serious and potentially fatal liver injury. Acute liver failure requiring liver transplantation has been reported. Major transaminases, including ALT, AST, and bilirubin, before initiating treatment, at two weeks and four weeks after initiation, then monthly thereafter, for first 18 months, and then every three months thereafter. Prompt action in response to laboratory abnormalities, sign, or symptoms indicative of hepatic injury can mitigate, but not eliminate, the risk of serious hepatotoxicity. Because of the risk of serious liver injury, GenRQ is available only through risk evaluation and mitigation uh, strategy program called GenRQ REMS program. My name is Mohammed Tamgar. I'm one of the nephrologists at UCLA. I've been involved in the ADPKD and treatment of ADPKD, and I'm happy to have a conversation on the data supporting the treatment in ADPKD patients. The pivotal data are based on two important clinical trials, TEMPO-34 and REPRISE. These trials included more than 2,800 patients and demonstrated that GenRQ slowed the decline in the kidney function and progression of kidney disease across CKD stage 1 to 4. So let me go and explain each study separately. TEMPO-34 was a three-year trial in patients with CKD stages 1 to 3. The primary endpoint was to assess the annual rate of change in the total kidney volume, or TKV, and a third endpoint was to assess the risk of worsening kidney function based on estimated GFR. The trial met its pre-specified primary endpoint of three-year change in TKV. Over a three-year period, the primary endpoint of TKV increased by 2.8% per year with GenRQ versus 5.5% per year with placebo. This corresponds to the treatment effect of negative 9.2 percentage point which is 49% reduction in the total kidney volume growth at the end of the three year in the intention to treat population. The difference in TKV treatment group mostly developed within the first year, which was the earliest assessment, with little further difference in years two and three. GenRQ has little effect on kidney signs beyond what accrues during the first year of treatment. The third endpoint, kidney function slope, was assessed as a slope of EGFR during treatment from end of titration to the last on-drug visit. The estimated difference in the annual rate of change in those who contributed to the analysis is 1.0 ml per minute per year, representing a 26% reduction in the rate of renal function decline with GenRQ compared with placebo. Reprise was a shorter 12-month study in more advanced kidney disease, stages two to four. The primary endpoint was changed in the estimated GFR, comparing pre-treatment baseline with post-treatment. In the reprise study, GenRQ slowed the estimated GFR decline in patients with ADPKD over 12 months, which included patients with CKD, late stage two to early stage four. In a randomized period, the change in estimated GFR from pre-treatment baseline to post-treatment follow-up was a drop of 2.3 ml per minute per year with GenRQ, compared with a larger drop of 3.6 ml per minute per year in those treated with placebo. This corresponds to a treatment effect of 1.3 ml per minute per year, or 35% reduction in decline in the kidney function compared uh, with placebo. In both studies, the most common adverse reaction observed with GenRQ with an incidence greater than 10%, and at least twice compared with that placebo were thirst, polyuria, nocturia, polycouria, and polyuria. A 2022 publication examined retrospectively 
in a longitudinal analysis the pooled data to assess the long-term efficacy on GenRQ in patients with ADPKD. The analysis used data from eight GenRQ clinical trials and five studies without GenRQ, which basically look at the natural history of disease on the standard of care. The follow-up period was five and a half years. The study looked at long-term effectiveness of GenRQ on kidney function and total kidney volume. The analysis showed that GenRQ slowed down the rate of EGFR decline by 1.01 ml per minute per year, or by approximately 25% compared with standard of care. Compared with standard of care, over the entire duration of five and a half years, GenRQ reduced total kidney volume growth at years one, three, and five. But any study had some limitation, and for this pool analysis for GenRQ and ADPKD, there was some difference between treatment group that may have affected the outcome. Use of matching and multiple regression adjustment for relative comparison helped to reduce the biases, but residual confounding factors still exist. Patient enrolled in different times and clinical study may have had differences in characteristic or lifestyle factors that may have not been reflected in the baseline. Plus, subjects who did not perform well might have dropped earlier, especially among observational studies. Therefore, observations after five and a half years follow-up were excluded to reduce the potential bias caused by informative missings. In terms of safety, long-term safety and tolerability of GenRQ was evaluated in an open-label long extension study, which was actually published in 2021, and they enrolled patients if they had completed reprise either on GenRQ or on placebo, Tempo 44, which was the open label extension, Tempo 34, or the phase two nocturne study. Monthly liver function testing was required for all subjects during the first 18 months of accumulative GenRQ exposure, with the monitoring every three months thereafter, which is similar to uh, the monitoring protocol we use in the REMS program. Of 1,814 screen subjects, 1,803 enrolled in the extension, and 1,800 received more than one dose of GenRQ. In a long-term safety analysis of, in ADPKD, patient had 3.9 and up to 11 years of total exposure to GenRQ. So 28 patients had a cumulative GenRQ exposure of up to 11 years, and then 520 patients had GenRQ exposure of seven and a half years or greater. No case of Heil's law was observed uh, when monitoring was carried out according to the current REMS program. For audience members that are not familiar with, with uh, Heil's law, it's defined as ALT or AST more than three times upper limit of normal and total bilirubin more than two times upper limit of normal in the absence of cholestasis, which is defined by alkanon phosphatase less than two times the upper limit of normal. The result of this trial is consistent with the known safety profile of GenRQ and the current liver function test monitoring protocol included within the REMS program. The most common observed adverse reaction with GenRQ, which was more than 10%, and at least twice compared with placebo, were thirst, polyuria, nocturia, polycauria, and polydipsy. GenRQ aquaretic treatment emerged adverse reaction, which include thirst, polyuria, and nocturia were more frequent among subjects who had been receiving placebo in the reprise and had the least amount of prior exposure to GenRQ than in GenRQ-treated subjects from reprise and Tempo 4.4. Similarly, treatment emergent adverse events leading to discontinuation of GenRQ occurred more often in subjects from reprise placebo than those from reprise GenRQ or TEMPO 44. Overall, discontinuation and aquaretic treatment emerge adverse event decreased with longer exposure to GenRQ, with most discontinuation occurring within the first 18 months. Indication and important safety information for GenRQ, Tolvaptan.
Indication. GenarQ is indicated to slow kidney function decline in adults at risk of rapidly progressing autosomal dominant polycystic kidney disease. ADPKD. Important safety information. Warning, risk of serious liver injury. GenarQ, Tolvaptan, can cause serious and potentially fatal liver injury. Acute liver failure requiring liver transplantation has been reported. Measure transaminases, ALT, AST, and bilirubin before initiating treatment at two weeks and four weeks after initiation, then monthly for the first 18 months and every three months thereafter. Prompt action in response to laboratory abnormalities, signs, or symptoms indicative of hepatic injury can mitigate, but not eliminate, the risk of serious hepatotoxicity. Because of the risks of serious liver injury, GenarQ is available only through a risk evaluation and mitigation strategy program called the GenarQ REMS program. Contraindications. History, signs or symptoms of significant liver impairment or injury. This contraindication does not apply to uncomplicated polycystic liver disease. Taking strong CYP3A inhibitors. With uncorrected abnormal blood sodium concentrations unable to sense or respond to thirst, hypovolemia, hypersensitivity, e.g. anaphylaxis, rash, to GenarQ, or any component of the product, uncorrected urinary outflow obstruction, anuria, serious liver injury. GenarQ can cause serious and potentially fatal liver injury. Acute liver failure requiring liver transplantation has been reported in the post-marketing ADPKD experience. Discontinuation in response to laboratory abnormalities or signs or symptoms of liver injury, such as fatigue, anorexia, nausea, right upper abdominal discomfort, vomiting, fever, rash, pruritus, icterus, dark urine, or jaundice, can reduce the risk of severe hepatotoxicity. To reduce the risk of significant or irreversible liver injury, assess ALT, AST, and bilirubin prior to initiating GenarQ at two weeks and four weeks after initiation, then monthly for 18 months and every three months thereafter. Hypernatremia, dehydration, and hypovolemia. GenarQ therapy increases free water clearance, which can lead to dehydration, hypovolemia, and hypernatremia. Instruct patients to drink water when thirsty and throughout the day and night if awake. Monitor for weight loss, tachycardia, and hypotension because they may signal dehydration. Ensure abnormalities in sodium concentrations are corrected before initiating therapy. If serum sodium increases above normal or the patient becomes hypovolemic or dehydrated and fluid intake cannot be increased, Suspend GenarQ until serum sodium, hydration status, and volume status parameters are within the normal range. Inhibitors of CYP3A. Concomitant use of GenarQ with drugs that are moderate or strong CYP3A inhibitors, e.g. ketoconazole, itraconazole, lopinavir-ritonavir, indinavir-ritonavir, ritonavir, and conavaptan, increases tolvaptan exposure. Use with strong CYP3A inhibitors is contraindicated. Dose reduction of GenarQ is recommended for patients taking moderate CYP3A inhibitors. Patients should avoid grapefruit juice beverages while taking GenarQ. Adverse reactions. Most common observed adverse reactions with GenarQ, incidence greater than 10% and at least twice that for placebo, were thirst, polyuria, nocturia, polyuria, and polydipsia. Other drug interactions, strong CYP3A inducers. Co-administration with strong CYP3A inducers reduces exposure to GenarQ. Avoid concomitant use of GenarQ with strong CYP3A inducers. V2 receptor agonist. Tolvaptan interferes with the V2 agonist activity of desmopressin, DDAVP. Avoid concomitant use of GenarQ with a V2 agonist. Pregnancy and lactation. Based on animal data, GenarQ may cause fetal harm. In general, GenarQ should be discontinued during pregnancy. Advise women not to breastfeed during treatment with GenarQ. To report suspected adverse reactions, 
contact Atsuka America Pharmaceutical Incorporated at 1-800-438-9927 or FDA at 1-800-FDA-1088, www.fda.gov slash medwatch. Please see full prescribing information, including boxed warning. Available on this platform or at this presentation, 